Yeah, so, so um, uh, Srikant asked me to give you a short lecture on passivity. Uh, so what we will do is, um, I will revise some concepts about passivity, the definitions and such, and then do something about uh, on, on passivity-based control. Um, so uh, this is the plan for part of the, of the talk. Um, I will speak about uh, passivity in systems theory and also passivity-based uh, passivity control and um, yeah, passivity-based control. Uh, that will be like the last, uh, the, the second part of the, of the talk. So pa passivity, if you have studied stability uh, in the sense of Lyapunov, passivity is some kind of dual of, of Lyapunov or complement. You have to leave behind the, 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 the story about a, a, a model with a differential equation and so on. Passivity is it's really a black box perspective on, on, on system analysis, right? So, for instance, an electrical network transforms voltages into currents. Uh, a radiator transforms current into heat, etc. right? So a falling object that transforms gravitational force into speed of falling and so on. So you have a system that has inputs and has outputs, and it transforms the inputs into, into outputs. So let's, let's look at, at passivity through, through the examples of... Uh, electrical networks, because it kind of started that way. Um, basically, you have, a, uh, in an electrical network, you, you have this, this input here, uh, a voltage that you apply to, to, to terminals, and then you have a load, and you have this current uh, flowing through, through the load. Uh, you can see that as a, as a black box system, right? So you have the voltage that goes in and the, the uh, current that goes out. Um, you can uh, say that there is a difference of potential that is, is here, right? And a difference of potential, as you know, is just the difference between uh, two, two charges of opposite signs. And that will produce the, the current, right? So considering that the load is a conducting element, it will uh, actually oppose to, to probably to, to the passage of, this, of these currents. So uh, owing to the loss of uh, magnetism, the, the, the charge Q plus, will, uh, I mean, this is a convention, will move through the load towards the charge Q minus, and, and this movement of the charges is, is actually the, the, the current, right? So, as we know, the current is the derivative of the charge with respect to time, how these, these charges essentially are, are moving uh, in, inside the, the, the wire, so to say. Um, in terms of energy, um, we say that there is an electrical potential energy that is transformed into kinetic energy, right? So, again, we, we apply an input voltage, that's a potential energy that we, are, that we have there, because we, we have some, some potential energy stored probably in a capacitor or in, a, in, a, in, in the uh, adapter, and it is injected into the circuit and it generates kinetic energy, it generates movement, meaning the, the charges are moving, there is a, this current uh, that is being generated. So the key thing here is that electric, there is a transformation of, of energy, right? So hence the dynamic, uh, the dynamic system. Now, if we assume that the load is purely res resistive uh, and we apply a, a voltage at, at the input, then we have, uh, we are, what we are doing is we are supplying some energy into, into the system, right? So, um, there is a, a supply of energy. This is, this is an important keyword in passive systems. Naturally, the resistive element will, will warm up, right? So then some energy will be lost. So again, there is, there is voltage. There is an energy transformation. There is current generated. It goes through the load, but some of the energy that is, is generated or transformed actually will dissipate in the form of heat because, because the load is heating up. Then we speak of uh, systems that are dissipating energy, right? So it's energy that is kind of lost. Well, not lost because, well, uh, it's, it's lost in, this, in the sense that you, you are not using it, but it's, it is there, right? It's just transformed and it transforms in the form of heat. Maybe you are too young to, to, to know the uh, tungsten uh, in the incandescent uh, bulbs. Now they are all LEDs, but... Uh, there was a time when uh, they were resistive elements and they, they could, could get uh, pretty hot. Uh, so that, that uh, would be an example in which you have this energy, energy loss, right? 
Another part of the energy, maybe, maybe perhaps recovery for some purpose nowadays. We, we see a lot of uh, research, applied research into going in this direction. How can we recover energy from, from this type of, of systems? In, in France, for instance, they are working in, uh, in Alstom, the company that makes trains. They are trying to figure out how uh, to recover energy when, from, from the uh, uh, breakage of the, of, the, of the trains. When they break, when they, they come to stop, they, they want to recover the, the energy that is spent there. Uh, this is a classical example, otherwise, of, of a passive system, right, of energy transformation. Uh, a dam, you have some water here. There is a difference, difference of level in, in, in the water, so there is a difference of potential, right? So there is some potential energy stored due to, to, the, to the difference in the levels of the, of the water. And then when you open the valves and the water flows here, you create a movement because there, there is this transformation of energy once more of, of potential into kinetic. It goes, you know, the story, it goes into a turbine, it makes it turn, etc., and you convert it into electrical energy and so on. So this is just one more uh, example of how you can transform energy and, and, and uh, and that's what we want to do essentially when we, do, uh, when we deal with passivity and passivity-based control. So to study all this in a more formal way, uh, what we do is we need some, some tools, right? Some definitions and some, some theorems and, and so on. So what we are going to do is to start with this uh, energy transformation uh, equation, uh, which recovers all what I have been, uh, I've been saying so far. And this energy balance equation, what it says is that the energy that you have available at some time t um, is the same as the, the energy that you had at the beginning of, of, uh, of your experiment, whenever that beginning was, and minus or the, the energy that was dissipated that you lost into, into heat in the bulb or whatever. And, uh, of course, uh, the energy that you have available also uh, depends on the, the energy that you put into the into the system right so you have some supplied energy for what you had at the beginning and what was dissipated uh, somewhere in the way if there is no dissipation well ideally we can think of that of course in, in reality there, there are no systems that are lossless you always lose some energy but mathematically you could say that if, if you don't have dissipation then you you would have an equality here and we we would call it a lossless system Otherwise, uh, this energy balance equation is telling you that in a passive system, you can only uh, recover as much energy as, uh, I mean, the maximum energy you can recover from it is, of course, uh, smaller than whatever you supplied into it plus uh, whatever was, was already there, right? So very, very simple inequality. So, uh, in the example of the circuit, we have that uh, we have this energy inequality and this energy balance equation uh, satisfied due to the energy dissipation in the current, right? So one cannot pull out more energy out of a passive circuit than what was fed into it. That's, that's a very uh, clear statement, right? So let's, let's look a little bit closer into, into circuits. At least that's what uh, people did many decades ago and um, came up with this interpretation of passivity uh, of, uh, of linear systems. There is a whole theory in, in, in the frequency domain, but I will not go there. So let, let's imagine our circuit is, is an RLC circuit. So it has a resistive and a inductive and a capacitor um, elements. Each of these systems, each of, each of these elements, uh, have a, a key role in the, in the passivity of the, of the circuit. So uh, first of all, if we apply Kirchhoff's law, we can see that the, um, we have this, this um, equation here. So the, the, the voltage equations uh, law of, of uh, Kirchhoff, it says that the, the voltage that you put in the, uh, the, uh, the input, it's equals to the voltage, uh, to the sum of the voltages in each of the elements, right? So the voltage in the inductor, the voltage in the capacitor, and the voltage that is dissipated in the uh, in the um, in the resistor element, right? So this is the the Kirchhoff's law of uh, balance of uh, voltages. If we multiply by by uh, the current on both sides, so everywhere, we obtain the uh, power balance equation, right? So you can see the first you could see it as a force balance equation, 
and the second one it's a power balance equation, right? So you are multiplying the current by the, uh, the voltage. Now, what we are doing here, uh, I said that the, the current is the output and the, the voltage is the input, right? So this is, you, you should see it in a more general way as the product of the input and the output. That's a, that's a power balance, it gives you a power balance equation. So the power in your, in your circuit is equal to the power dissipated through the resistor element, the power in the capacitor, and the power in the, um, in the inductor, right? Um, if we integrate that on both sides, so we integrate this on both sides, we put integrals everywhere, uh, we will obtain uh, this, right? So then we have the integral of power, well, it's, it's uh, energy, right? So we have the energy balance equation that is, is on, the, on the slide. So uh, this is the energy in, in, uh, dissipated in the, in, through the resistive element due to the passage of the current. This is the energy in the inductor, and this is the energy in the capacitor. Now, the, the, as you can see, I'm using the letters V and, and, and T here to assimilate this uh, part of energy in the inductor as a kinetic energy, right? Because, um, yeah, the, 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 the energy stored in the, in, the, in the inductor is considered to be kinetic energy, and the energy in the capacitor is potential energy, right? So it, it depends on the charges on the, on the, on the circuit, so what, what we, have, we have stored in the capacitor. And um, yeah, so all that is, so this is a dissipated energy, this is, this is potential energy, and this is kinetic energy. Now you have the integral from zero to t, so that gives you the energy available at any time t, and here we have the energy that was available initially, both in the capacitor and the uh, inductor, so to say. And on the other side, you have the integral of the input and, uh, and the output, the product of the input and the output. This is called, uh, this expression here is called uh, sometimes inner product, okay? So the inner product of E and V. And um, yeah, it's written, uh, so this is written sometimes like this. Maybe you have seen it. So that would be just this, uh, this integral there. Yeah, so this is the energy balance equation. As I said, if we rearrange all, the, all these terms, we put this and this guy together. Um, over here, we will call that available energy at the time t. And these two guys, which come from here and here, that will be the initial energy that was in my circuit. And then um, this, as I already said, is the dissipated energy, right? And this is what I supplied. I just put it on, on the other side. I guess there, there should be a, a minus there. No, maybe not. Uh, no, this one, there is, this one went on the other side and then got a minus side. So this is the, uh, the energy balance equation, right? So um, what I can pull out of my circuit at any moment equals what was there in the beginning minus what was dissipated plus what I supplied into, into my, my circuit. Very uh, simple. Uh, the, the nice thing about passivity is that, well, basically somehow any system, I would say, probably is, is passive in, in, some, in, in some way, right? But it just depends what you mean by passivity. As, 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 you have, as you have seen everywhere here, we have an input and we have an output. So when we talk about passivity, we just need to be clear. Passivity, what do you mean? From, from which input to which, which output, okay? But then you take any, basically any system in, in real life, and there will be somehow some map, mapping there between some input and some output, and, and you should have this passivity property. So um, uh, in engineering, uh, another typical example of a passive system is, is a pendulum, right? So, uh, so let's see a little bit about, about pendula, how, how this, this passivity works. So let's say we, we have this, this pendulum here um, with, um, it, there is some torque applied to it uh, here, and it moves with certain velocity, Q dot. Um, and then it acquires a, a, a position, an angle that we are calling Q with respect to the, to the horizontal axis. You can define it the way you prefer, but I'm doing it this way. And assuming that the mass is right there at the, all concentrated here, then we have this uh, center of mass there, 
and uh, the gravitational uh, acceleration acting there. So the, there is a force applied, and L is the distance from the joint, from the axis of, of rotation to the, to the center of mass. So the force balance equation for this system, as we see, so for the, for the circuit, uh, now the force balance for this, for this system is equal to, to, to this, right? So we have uh, mass times acceleration. Um, then we have MGL sine of Q, which is the gravitational force, right? Due to the, to the gravity that is acting on, on, the, on the mass here. And we have some torque that we are uh, putting in uh, in our system to, to, to move it, right? So this is a force balance equation. We, we apply some force, and then there are forces that are uh, natural to, for, to, to, to our system. One force that comes from kinetic energy, and one force that comes from potential energy. So uh, we have this uh, force balance equation, and we can also compute the energy balance equation. So the energy balance equation will be given by uh, this expression here. Uh, it's going to be this, the addition of kinetic energy and potential energy, right? So quadratic uh, function on, on, on the uh, angular velocities and this term of uh, potential energy. Now, the, um, the energy balance equation can be, can be obtained as follows. Uh, the total time derivative of the, uh, the energy equation equating the force uh, balance equation is this. Uh, let me recall what I'm doing here. So if we take the derivative on both sides of this, of this uh, equality here, everywhere, right, the derivative of that, we will obtain uh, this equation here. So the derivative of, of uh, the energy equals q dot times uh, times tau. Uh, the details are not here, but uh, you can see that actually what we have is that so uh, the derivative of that, so the derivative of this with respect to t is going to be uh, mgl uh, sine of q, right, times q dot. So when you take the derivative of that, you will obtain, uh, you will obtain, and, the, and the, from the derivative of this, you get uh, m times uh, q dot times q double dot that comes from here. So that's going to be tau minus uh, mgl uh, plus sine. Uh, of q times q dot. And all that is, uh, yeah, something like that. Yes. Sorry? Ah, no. All is, all should be divided by, uh, no, this is, this is fine, right? This is q double dot is, yeah, divided by m, right? Something like that. Anyway, this, uh, I think there is a wrong sign there, but the, the, the thing is that these should go away with that, and you are left only with this, uh, with this term here. Uh, is there a sign wrong there? Here is minus, right? Oh, here? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, normally you should get, you should get these. So, the, the thing is that all the, the, the nonlinear terms go away, and uh, you only have on one side the derivative of, of, the, uh, of the energy, and on the other side you have the, um, you have q dot that we are going to call output, and you have tau that we are going to call, uh, we are going to call input. Yeah. So we have this energy balance equation once, once more, as we had before, um, uh, current integral of current times times voltage equals uh, equals energy or en the derivative of the energy equals current times voltage in the in the electrical circuit. Now, if you integrate on on both sides of this equation, you get of course the uh, energy balance equation that is here. Um, the available energy equals the initial energy plus the uh, supplied energy. So the supplied energy was supplied through the torque that you injected into your, in, in your system, right? So this is the external input. Um, if you are trying to control this system, that will be your, uh, 
uh, your control input. In this, in this pendulum, as you see, um, there is no, this is an ideal pendulum without friction, which obviously does not exist. But uh, if we add friction, what will happen is that um, we will recover from, from the same energy equation. Uh, we will recover, um, yeah, this dynamic equation with uh, some damping here. Okay, so this, this is a friction coefficient that is damping our, uh, our, uh, our system. Right, so like if we just let it go, it will uh, go down, and then eventually it will stop oscillating, and, and will just go to to the natural equilibrium um, due to this due to this damping. In the previous example, if you just uh, it's an ideal pendulum that you you can just push, and it will just keep oscillating forever, or or maybe just small oscillations, but of course that does does not exist. Um, yeah, the energy balance equation for this system with the damping now will be uh, this. So the derivative of the energy equals minus b q dot plus uh, square plus q dot times uh, tau. So once again, the the output times the input, the dissipativity uh, term, and uh, the energy, uh, the derivative of the energy. If we integrate that then we get, uh, again, this energy balance equation, right? So uh, available energy equals uh, initial energy minus what was lost due to, the, due to the friction and, the of course, the supplied energy. So we can get um, the maximum energy that we, we can get at any moment it amounts to maximum the initial energy plus what we supplied into it, right? So uh, the moral of the story is that uh, a passive electric uh, element is a device that does not generate, generate of course uh, quotation because we know that it's not possible to generate energy but just to transform it. But let's say a passive element is, is a system that does not generate energy but it only consumes it, okay? So at best it doesn't, uh, we don't lose anything but yeah, it, normally it consumes energy, right? So. Uh, in, in electrical circuits theory, we say that the voltage source is uh, an active device, right? It's the one that is injecting energy, actually probably taking it from somewhere else. And, um, and the resistance is a passive device, right? Because it is, it is the one that is actually dissipating uh, energy. Um, passivity is an energy transformation concept. You, you want to see a, a, a system as a black box that is just transforming inputs into outputs and, and in that way, it's just transforming the, some kind of energy into some other kind of energy. And the, in, this, in this process, there is necessarily some energy that is, is uh, consumed and, and probably dissipated. So um, overall, it's an input-output perspective into, into analysis of systems. Okay, so we don't care so much about, uh, about uh, what is inside. Uh, when we don't want to do, use passivity to control the system, of course, we want to look into the, into the model, but we will see how these concepts help to, to, to design controllers um, from a very engineering uh, viewpoint, um, trying to manipulate this, uh, this energy. So, but other than that, in this, in this theory, the system is really a, a black box. And um, what else do I have here? Since we regard the nature of the inputs and outputs and also the laws of physics, um, then a passive system may be modeled by a transfer function. So, of course, there is a lot of theory on passive systems for, um, for linear systems using transfer functions using the, the frequency in the frequency domain. But we can also... Uh, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's way more, more general because, again, it's input output. So in your black box, you can have whatever, right? It, it can be no linear, it can be um, discontinuous, time varying. It can, it, you are just, you don't even basically care what's inside as long as you just have inputs and outputs, right? So it's, it's really very general, a very general theory. 